In recent decades, computers have become more and more powerful. But computers as we know them today have a major limitation. They can only perform one calculation at a time. In the Quantum Photonics Research Group at the Niels Bohr Institute, we are researching the processing of data by way of quantum technology. We are working on developing tomorrow's quantum photonic chips based on light, in the form of photons, instead of electrons. That is photonics instead of electronics. We are working to exploit the strange properties of the quantum world. The quantum world is fundamentally different from our more familiar classical world. Nature, buildings, animals, people, everything that we can perceive with our senses. Here we know that one thing cannot be in two places at once. Football cannot be shot into the goal and be located out in the middle of the pitch at the same time. Just as you cannot give a person a pat on the back and have another person immediately feel it at an entirely different place in the world. But in the microscopic world of the atoms, everything is fundamentally different than what we are used to in everyday life. Here the laws of quantum mechanics prevail. In the quantum world of atoms, one atom, or a light particle, that is a photon, can be located in two places at the same time. This is called the superposition principle. And two atoms, or photons, can become entangled. That is to say, a quantum mechanic link is created between them. This link can be maintained even if the photons travel far away from each other. And this means that if we measure the one photon, then its entanglement partner will be affected immediately, even if the two photons are located very far away from each other. Albert Einstein could not reconcile himself to this strange phenomena, and he called it spooky. Today, such strange quantum phenomena are common in our laboratories, and they open up a whole new world of technological possibilities. Quantum mechanics was developed in the early 20th century as a theory that aimed to describe the microscopic world made up of atoms as the fundamental building blocks of matter and photons, which are the fundamental constituents of light. Quantum mechanics was largely developed at the Niels Bohr Institute in Copenhagen by Niels Bohr and other prominent scientists like Schrödinger, Heisenberg, Dirac and Einstein. One of the conclusions of quantum mechanics was that elementary particles, such as photons, can behave as both particles and as waves, depending on which experiments we perform. This phenomenon has almost magical consequences, which we are trying to utilize for the technology of the future, quantum technology. Just as electronic chips are key component of the computers we know today, a quantum computer could potentially be based on so-called photonic chips, where the individual photons can be controlled. For future circuits based on photons, you need to be able to control individual photons. And we are researching how to design photonic chips. A single atom can emit one photon at a time, but atoms are difficult to control. And so instead, we build light sources out of solid materials. Such a light source is called a quantum dot. A quantum dot is only a millionth of a millimeter. This is a nanometer. A quantum dot is comprised of thousands of atoms, but it still emits one photon at a time. But the photon is emitted in a random direction and is therefore not practical, as the efficiency of the single photon source is consequently low. That is why we are building a so-called photonic crystal around the quantum dot. It is obtained by fabricating small holes of approximately 100 nanometers in diameter in a periodic pattern around the quantum dot. The holes have the function of reflecting the emitted light back to the quantum dot. If you choose a proper photonic crystal, the quantum dot cannot emit light at all, since all emission directions are prohibited. This is a surprising phenomenon, as how can the quantum dot know that it is sitting in a photonic crystal and may not emit light? The answer must of course be found in quantum mechanics. Here, quantum vacuum fluctuations are always present, even in total darkness, and they are responsible for the light emission of a photon. Photonic crystals can suppress vacuum fluctuations and thus control the light emission. You can now use this control over light emission for various tricks with photons. If you leave out a number of holes from a photonic crystal, a waveguide is created. 
The quantum dot can now emit photons in a certain direction, which is determined by the omitted row of holes. In this way, we can control the photons so they are channeled into just one direction and can be used as quantum information. This is a deterministic single photon source, which is a basic component in a quantum optical chip. Subsequently, the path of the photons can be split in two. According to the superposition principle, the photon does not choose one path over the other, but actually is present in both channels simultaneously. You can also combine two photons and get them to form a quantum link between them, the so-called entanglement. You send two photons through different waveguides and let them meet and interact, in which they can become entangled. The photons are then sent out again through two waveguides, but now they team up such that the two photons always exit in the same waveguide. But which waveguide they choose is undecided. If you register that the photons are in one of the waveguides, you can immediately conclude that they are not in the other waveguide. But the photons first decide in the moment we measure them. Before the measurement, they are present in both waveguides simultaneously. The photons contain information, the so-called quantum information. The information we use is which waveguide the photon is moving in. If it is in one waveguide, we call it zero. If it's in the other waveguide, one. That is one bit of information. The quantum superposition principle allows for the photon to be in two different states at the same time, that is both zero and one. This is a quantum bit, or commonly known as a qubit. By combining several photons in the form of qubits, you can create a complex network of entanglement. This opens up for a whole world of new possibilities for secure communication and efficient data processing. And the goal is to build a quantum computer that will be able to perform many operations in parallel by using qubits instead of classical bits. Based on these functionalities, the goal now is to build a complex photon circuit on a photonic chip that contains many quantum dots, waveguides and photon splitters. Such a quantum circuit will be able to perform complex quantum simulations. This could be used for demanding simulations of, for example, large molecules in chemistry or biology, which are often too complicated to be described in detail on a regular computer. With a quantum simulator, it will be possible to build a circuit that mimics the development of complex molecules and thus to study their properties. In the last century, quantum mechanics has evolved from being a basic theory of the microscopic world to now forming the foundation for the practical development of new technologies. The physicist Erwin Schrödinger once said that experiments with single atoms, electrons or photons were limited to thought experiments. Today we have proven that he was wrong. Today we are experimenting with single photons and quantum dots every single day. But the strange properties of the quantum world must be limited to a certain scale. One of the open research questions is how big a quantum system we can construct before the system effectively becomes classical and loses the quantum properties that we seek to exploit. Where is the border between classical physics and quantum physics? This is what we are trying to discover. Thank you.